The Imperial Japanese Navy, or the Dainapon Taikoku Kaigon, was the main naval warfare branch of the Imperial Japanese military. Today we'll discuss its rank structure, as well as some of the roles of the ranks within the Imperial Japanese Navy. <laughs> The first proper Imperial Japanese Navy was created during the Meiji Restoration of 1868 during the overthrow of the Shogunate and the remodeling of Japanese society. It came from fears that after the arrival of the Americans, as well as other great world powers, it posed a threat to the Japanese coastline. After the creation of the office in 1886, the first Chief of General Staff, Ito Toshiyoshi, was largely responsible for naval reform which would turn the Japanese Navy into the world's third largest naval power. This was partially due to the aid and guidance received from the British Admiralty in methods of naval warfare and schooling. The Japanese Navy would first distinguish itself during the Battle of Tsushima in 1905 during the Russo-Japanese War. This battle would almost be more ending in its significance, with the entire Russian Baltic fleet being destroyed, resulting in approximately 5,000 Russian casualties and the loss of an entire fleet. Whereas Admiral Togo Hayashiro, the commander of the battle, only received 114 casualties with minimal ship damage and losses. Nevertheless, let us continue on to the rank structure. The Lord High Admiral of the Empire of Japan, or the Daijin Sui Kaigun Taisho, was the main highest non-achievable rank within the Imperial Japanese Navy. It was bestowed only onto the Emperor along with the title of Grand Marshal of the Empire, which was Commander-in-Chief of the Army. Like its the Army counterpart, this Navy role was basically Commander-in-Chief of the Navy, though historians tend to disagree on whether or not the Emperor actually held any power over the armed forces during the 20th century due to the coup in the 30s. It could be recognised by four floral crests over a gold shoulder board as well as f around six bars on the sleeve. You'll see it on screen right now. The rank of Marshal Admiral, or in Japanese, Jensui Kaigun Taisho, was the main highest achievable rank for non-royal personnel within the Imperial Japanese Navy. It served most often as the Navy Minister or the Chief of General Staff of the Navy. The most notable holder of this rank, who you'll be familiar to, is Isoroku Yamamoto. He served as the commander of the Naval Pacific Theatre and gained infamy for the architecture of the Pearl Harbor attack. This was until 1943 when he was assassinated by the Allies. It could be recognised by three floral crests over a gold shoulder board as well as three thin bars over two thick on the sleeve. To distinguish it from its predecessor, it had a traditional style Japanese breast badge on the blazer of the uniform. The rank of Admiral, or Kaigun Taisho in Japanese, was the second highest rank within the Imperial Japanese Navy. Unlike the insignia of the previous rank, this one did not have an enamel breastplate. Nevertheless, the role of this rank was usually to command a naval fleet, or hold a position within the General Staff, or perhaps the Naval Aviation Division. Some notable Japanese Admirals include Togo Haishira and Kogo Minichi. It could be recognised by three floral crests over a gold shoulder board, as well as three thin bars over two thick on the sleeve. The rank of Vice Admiral, or in Japanese Kaigun Chujo, was the middle rank of the Admiralty of the Japanese Navy. Much like its superior rank, its role would be varied depending on the speciality of its holder. It could hold a staff office, command a naval squadron or an air fleet, or hold a position within the Naval Aviation Corps. It could be recognised by two floral crests over gold shoulder boards as well as two thin bars over two thick on the sleeve. The rank of Vice Admiral, or in Japanese Kaigun Shosho, was the lowest rank of the Admiralty in the Japanese Navy. Its role would be more or less to command either a squadron or a smaller sea unit, or hold another position out of command of sailing. It could be recognised by one floral crest over a gold shoulder board, as well as one thin bar over two thick on the sleeve. <laughs> The rank of captain within the Imperial Japanese Navy, or in its Japanese name, the Kaigun Daisa, was the highest line officer rank available. Its role could be more or less to command a naval vessel or a small unit of vessels, or it could hold some other roles too, as previously stated by the Japanese Admiralty. Interestingly, some captains also held the position of Commodore, which wasn't a rank and was more a position that would command the squadron. It could be recognised by three floral crests over a double gold and black striped shoulder boards, as well as the sleeve holding four golden bars. The rank of commander, or Kaigun Chusa in Japanese, was the middle rank of the Imperial Japanese Navy senior line officers. Its role was varied and could command anything from a vessel to a specific department or even act as an aide to a higher officer. It could be recognised by two floral crests over a double golden black striped shoulder board, meanwhile the sleeve held three golden bars. 
The rank of Lieutenant Commander, or Kaigon Shosa in Japanese, was the lowest rank of the Japanese Imperial Navy Senior Line Officers. Its role was varied as the previous two ranks were, and it could be anything from a commander of a vessel to a aide to a higher officer to the commander of a specific department. It could be recognised by one floral crest over a double golden black striped shoulder board, and the sleeve held two and a half golden bars. The lieutenants are split into three distinct ranks, the lieutenant, the sub-lieutenant and acting sub-lieutenant which acted as the naval ensign. In Japanese, these ranks translate to the Kaigun Daiai, Kaigun Chuai and Kaigun Shoai. Being the lowest ranking officers, these roles did not command a vessel, but may have commanded a station on board one, or perhaps would have shadowed a senior officer as an aide. It could be recognised by either one, two or three floral crests over a singular golden black striped shoulder board, meanwhile the sleeve held either one, one and a half or two golden bars. The cadet officer ranks are a little more complicated than their army counterparts. The role were varied as most of the ranks are within this military, and most of them would be cadets still in schooling to become officers. The ranks are as follows, the midshipman, which translates to the Kaigun Shoi Kosohai, the reserve student or apprentice, which translates to the Kaigun Minarai Ikharai, I think I pronounced that correctly, the warrant officer, which translates to Hai Socho, and the cadet, which translates to the Kaigun Itakusai. I hope I pronounced those correctly. The Petty Officer First Class before 1942 or after 1942, the Superior Petty Officer was the highest available Petty Officer rank within the Japanese Navy. It could be translated as the Joto Haiso. The main role of this rank was to act much like its army counterpart, the Sergeant Major, as the main line of communication between the officers and the enlisted sailors. They would also often specialise in one or more aspects of the Navy, helping with efficiency in the running of the ship's stations. If they served on land or in naval warfare branch, then you can imagine the role would be far different. It would be recognised by three golden bars over a wreath around an anchor upon the upper sleeve of the wearer. The Petty Officer Second Class before 1942, or the Petty Officer First Class after 1942, was the middle rank of the Petty Officers within the Japanese Navy, and could be translated as the Ito Haiso. Much like its successor, its role was varied, and it could be recognised by two golden bars over a wreath around an anchor upon the upper sleeve of the wearer. The Petty Officer Third Class before 1942, or after 1942, the Petty Officer Second Class, was the lowest rank of the Petty Officers, and could be translated to Nito Haiso. It was recognised by one golden bar over a wreath around an anchor upon the upper sleeve of the wearer. The seamen were the lowest ranks of the Imperial Japanese Navy and indeed made up much of the majority of those aboard naval vessels. They didn't have any administrative roles within the Navy, however many of the ranks almost functioned as merit badges, much like the private first class. I'll go through them now. Firstly is the seamen first class, or the Ito Suai, or the leading seamen Suhaisho. This rank was the equivalent of an army corporal. Next is the rank of seaman second class, or Nito Suhai, or an able seaman Joto Suhai. This rank was reminiscent of the private first class in its roles and responsibilities. You might like to think of it as the deputy to the Ito Suhai. Next is the seaman third class, Santo Suhai, or the ordinary seaman Ito Suhai. This rank has no privileges or roles. Lastly is the rank of seaman fourth class, or Yonto Suhai, or the seaman recruit Nito Suhai, which was the lowest rank available within the Japanese navy. In the Imperial Japanese Navy, those who served in a non-executive manner were assigned to a special branch, whether that be the legal sector or aviation, everyone would be assigned to one. The colours would be notable on officers down the vertical lines of the shoulder board as well as bordering the naval golden cuffs. On enlisted men, the colour of the rolls and the insignia would change depending on the branch. Basic line personnel would use the default gold. The colours and assignments are as follows. Purple would be engineering, brown would be ship and engine construction, purple and brown would be ordnance construction, red would be the medical department aka surgeon, dentist and pharmacist and the hospital, corpsmen and combat medics, pale green would be legal, white would be paymaster, black would be executive line and survey officers, aviation would be, well, light blue, and green would be chief carpenters and finally the grey blue would be the bandmaster. <laughs> 